Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new session uh, from, uh, at our Future Food Conference at Holy Tisch. Today, uh, I am very um, happy to have Sofia Rubio uh, from Peru here to talk with her about supporting local global supply chains in the Global South. Um, Sofia Rubio is a Peruvian biologist and entrepreneur, and she founded Shiwi, which she will tell us more about in a second. Um, just for organizational um, matters, if you are watching on YouTube, um, you can um, and you have any questions for Sofia or you want to join with any sort of uh, comment to the uh, conversation, you can add your comment in the YouTube comment section. Um, if you're watching through our homepage through the Convention Hub, um, you need to switch over to the YouTube um, um, link and then you can add comments. Um, there will also be a deep dive with Sophia after this session here, starting at um, uh, 4.45 or just after we're done here. Um, so uh, if you want to talk to Sophia in person, you have more questions, more comments, you want to get to know her uh, and talk a little bit, you're very welcome to join us in the deep dive session through Jitsi. The Jitsi link is also in the YouTube description or in the convention hub on the very bottom of the program. Uh, that's it for me for now. Sophia, I'm really happy that you're here um, and I'm really excited to hear about your work that you're doing, um, about the company Shiwi and how this is all working. So um, welcome and um, I'm uh, passing over to you. Thank you, Clara. Thank you, girls. Good morning. Good morning here. Good afternoon there. <laughs> I'm in Lima now. So yeah, I will I will tell you some some stories and some information from from Shiwi, that is my company, and from the Amazon uh, forest, and 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 what its people doing here and what we are doing here. So I don't know if the presentation is on. Yeah, it's it's there. Good. So um, the first slide, see. So the, the Amazon basin, it's, it's um, something where I am going to stop. A basin, it's a concept where a, a land space collects the water from the precipitation in a common river, okay? So the Amazon basin, it's, it's more or less an open wide territory in the Amazon and it, it, connect, it connects or it goes through to the borders. So it's Colombia, it's Peru from the Andes, it's Brazil, it's Bolivia. So I want to, I want to say that <clears throat> because I think the food system here and there is connected and we need to think and, uh, about that connection. And it goes through the borders um, as the Amazon basin goes. So, um, because the local food systems, it exists and uh, are, are um, connect with the food system there in Germany or in Europe. And, and how? Um, it's because everything comes from everywhere and, and the market is one, one big thing that is connecting everything, even if we are not really conscious about that. So, uh, next. So the, the tropical forest is it's been uh, affected for everyone. This is gold mining uh, in the in the Amazon rainforest in in Peru, and we extract gold, we have money, and we sell it to another countries um, for money. And then we bought food with this money coming from another countries too. So if we are we keep going in that direction. And if we keep going in, in that way, at the end, we are going to have just gold and money to eat. So that's why it's important. And the next. So I, I think this is a, a, so, a, a soybean or maize or agriculture. And agriculture is responsible for the 70% of, of deforestation uh, in the forest, not just in, in Peru. It's everywhere in the, in the south. Um, 
and and that this co comes from from the green revolution or from this idea to to grow more food for feed more people but we are in this loop for 40 years 30 years and we are not solving that problem we keep uh, we are people with is hungry and and these lands are not enough we are producing more food that we need and and so on with this information so agriculture and food it's important for forest and for territories too the next one um, and as as is the uh, the land used by, by agriculture and and cultural food in different levels and different ways and the effects of of the food system packaging um, Carbon footprint and and this this connection uh, it involves everyone as we as we can see. So the next one and um, so uh, this is a an Amazon nut tree and I guess in English is Brazil nut tree and as you see Brazil nut tree grows in Bolivia in Peru in Brazil. Uh, and, and, and we call it uh, like that. So now we, we want to change the name to Amazon Nut. Uh, the next one. Yeah. So I wanted to, to see now how food is, is um, think from people from the Amazon, uh, from, from the forest. So for us, food is not just what we, it grows in a land, is is what it grows in trees and where you can collect from uh, from deep in the forest. Food is medicine. Food is um, pleasure, um, and we can uh, we can and attach this concept and and put it diff in a different package. Food is is integrated at itself, and it's integrated with people too. And and it's so so integrated, but we in in the culture, in a citizen culture or in an occidental culture, we we are losing that that um, idea of this integration, and and we are talking about resources, and what is a resource if it's not food, is what I take advantage of. Or is what I have can I can make money from, no? So so we have to take care what language are we using with this um, food, and how different we are seeing, or how different is our approach to this food, and that we that is our medicine and our our uh, even our status, and as much we are disconnect from this food, more 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 we, we see this food as a money and, and more we see this food uh, in, in the, this uh, market, like conventional markets. So the next one. So in these um, photos, I guess, um, it's me and my father and my sisters in the jungle traveling when I was a child and and be more connected with nature. Uh, and that's why I'm, I'm talking about this connection because as, as we, we can come back to this, uh, I guess we can see the market and we can see the money in a different way too, and the resources too. So um, that's why um, I create Shiwi. So nine years ago, almost, and this, the next one, okay. So in Shiwi, the idea of the territory, or the idea of the food, it's, um, it's talking with the idea of market and how powerful can, be mar can, can the market be uh, in terms of conservation of nature. I am biologist, so my idea was why we are fighting with all conservation people, uh, Love nature lovers, why we hate the other side and the market people. This, I'm just simplifying things, but um, 
we are always fighting and, and this is not going to go anywhere. So, so nine years ago, I created this company trying to, to involve more things than just money and resources in a, in a system. So I, I, I did this because, because territory is not just land, it's people, it's forest, it's knowledge, it's traditions. And that's what, what I call gastronomy. So, and, and this is the difference between food security and food sovereignty and blah. And so I guess you, you are going to talk about this these three days. So the next one. So the idea in Chiwi is give the option to the, to the, to the customers um, and, the, and, and, and the consumers uh, of participating of the conservation of nature through buying food, through buying products. So the people in, at the end of the chain is participating from the protection of the base uh, of the chain, just choosing good, just make a good choice, make a conscious choice uh, and knowing more. And here is the thing, this connection with nature, this connection between us, is going to make this possible. If we are disconnected, if we don't know where the cheese is made and how it's made, and it needs uh, fungus and it needs processes, and if we don't know that, we are going to um, just go to the supermarket and buy a food with cover in plastic because it can touch any other organism and and that disconnection can can make a bad bad market for me my perspective so um shiwi <laughs> this this small small company uh, it's selling products coming from national parks from people who lives inside the national parks or people who lives around the national places and people who is already um, a guard who is already um, a person who is preserving and, and helping to conserve this nature in these national parks for all of us. And that's one another thing, uh, what an, another interesting thing, that all of us as humans, we, we have this agreement of protect a, a percentage of land um, in national parks. And that's one, when I, when I discovered this was, whoa, this is, Super cool. This is in Germany, in Peru, in Colombia, in, Af in in some places in Kenya, in Japan. Everyone has national parks, and these national parks are alive. And these national parks have food, medicine, people. So if we have this agreement, um, uh, for me, this is the the integrity uh, of this uh, idea. So she we collect products from different national parks, from different people, and, and sell it in the market and tell the story and, and tell us about and, and go to the next one. Um, and allow the people to connect uh, with these flavors in, in, with, with, new, with new ways to see the food. And, we, and, and what is more important is, is she was selling conservation. And it's not understanding by, by people. Uh, it's not about the product itself. It's not about um, how much money you pay for it. It's about what is behind and, and who is behind and, and what ecosystem is behind at the end. So the next one. So I guess that's it. And, and, the, the, and, and there is one, the last one. Um, so this the title of, of my presentation it's uh, supporting local cha supply change in the south and this is another small concept that is is we we need to change supply chain uh, in terms it's it's really focused on the product and it's not it's no allowing the people goes in it, it we don't care we, we don't care who is behind the product if it's the product coming to me and that is, it was changed before uh, for an, another country that, that uh, it's value chain and it's how this product, this resource is getting value to uh, little by little for different P 
piece of the chain. But then you can see the chain and it's just a line. And as more people or as more pieces in, in between, the base and the, the forest and nature and the source is farther from the consumer. The consumer. So we need to close that chain and, and, and put it, the consumer and the base together. And, and that's, that's is, that is the idea of, of Shiwi. Um, that's it. That's it, uh, um, Clara. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Sophia. Um, I uh, have tons of little notes that I have here to fix on, but I think the first um, thing that you said what, that I thought was so interesting is that you say our food culture is fluid. Uh, you know, it's not food, local food culture in Brazil, local food culture in Peru. I mean, there is um, regional food cultures um, everywhere. And I would say in, for example, southern German food culture is different to northern German food culture on a, I mean, on a geographic scale. That's nothing to a Brazilian um, <laughs> geographic uh, size. But I think it's so interesting to think of it as being, you know, so closely connected to this river, to the Amazon, to the basin, and that people across multiple countries and borders are so deeply connected through biodiversity, through nature um, in their everyday lives where, you know, you might not even talk about it much, but it's just so deeply rooted in your, in your everyday, um, in your everyday food, I guess. Uh, yeah. So I think that's really cool. Um, <laughs> um, and then um, can you, can you, explain to me how a little bit more about how do the the products from the nat national parks and from the conversation areas are those products that the people there um produce um anyway or is this something that they would usually produce for their own um, um for their own consumption or how how does this involvement there work or how does their production work yeah um Usually, at, at the beginning, is is what they produce for their own, and what they produce for 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 the communities in some some um, some cases. But but of course, there's people who has land and and who can produce more and who can learn more, or learn how to connect the traditional knowledge to the knowledge for commercial issues because it's not. It's not the same. Uh, this year we were last year we were in Japan and 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 it was super uh, funny to see that the the traditional way to make suju uh, soy sauce it was full of fungus and creatures and bacteria all around because they they need this to create the soy uh, the soy um, sauce and it's the same. We we need bacteria. We need uh, fungus for make bread and cheese and yogurt and all of that. So in the in the field, we have all of this, but it needs to ma be made perfectly for the market, because of course the market a language is different and the, the commercial language is different. So then you need to put more technology. And then you need to talk in a different way. And sometimes we don't know that we are cultures, we are completely different cultures. So production, time, uh, communication are not in the same, in the same uh, level. But little by little, people in, in the Amazon basin or in, in closer to nature is learning how this thing works because they need money too. Um, and and yeah, sometimes it's honey, for example, and this is really cool. Uh, this honey honey side of shiwi. Uh, sometimes it's in my case we are nut collectors in in Tambopata National Reserve. So at the beginning was this nut, uh, this Amazon nut, made oil, um, butter, granola, snacks like everything, the bonds with it, everything from that adding value to this this um, product, no? this resource, this ingredient. So uh, for your, your question, it's, they are not really sophisticated um, chains, 
but little by little, with time, with uh, contact with this commercial area or with these consumers, this, this product uh, or this um, industry is, is growing. So one, one important actor in this uh, thing is the, the chefs. Chefs from in, in Peru, from uh, this big and famous chef, uh, um, high-ending high chefs, are using more and more this uh, diversity, this biodiversity in, in their display. And, and they are really good, like Virgilio Martinez and, and Gaston Acurio and Pedro Miguel Chafino, and they are using, and, and, and a lot of, of them are using these special fruits, this special palm tree fruit that nobody knows, and this is getting exotic, and this is getting good. But we have to think of behind of this. What if everyone can eat this tree? Can eat this palm tree? So we need to go back to the base and think, okay, how much amount of this we have, if it's seasonal or not, how, what about the laws that are protecting or not this, this ingredient, and, and so on. So, so that's why the market is tool, as a tool, is a really, really powerful tool, and we need to use it very carefully and very clever in a, in a clever way. But it's not a bad tool, it's a good tool. Yes. How, do you, how do you make sure that, you know, how, where is, how do you take measures of what is um, a good amount, you know? We, we see it once um, here, uh, uh, Western food culture has sort of uh, decided this is the new trend product and the new superfood. Um, it is something, you know, that has been known and used in, in, in other countries for a very long time. And then we, we want to have it and we take it all without any, you know, any sort of measurement in mind. How do you, how do you make sure, you know, if, if this Brazilian nut is, um, becomes very well known here, you, you, I, I don't know, you know, but how, how can we make sure that this is not, doesn't end in the stories that we continue to write here as, as Western civilization taking what we think we, we, we deserve, yeah. which is just, um, um, yeah, <laughs> racist, <laughs> colonialist, <laughs> anything. <laughs> Um, no, yeah, yeah, well, this is really, really important because as we are a food system, a global food system, and it, this system is connected, we need to really care about the law and about how policies are made and how, how this is, is working for the good thing and not for the bad thing, you know? So there are lots of laws. Uh, for a, a food, a exotic food coming to your country, for example, to the European Union, there is um, a barrier that that we we call a barrier. But it's uh, what is not known is a noble food, and it doesn't have a law in your country. So if it doesn't have a, a, a um, like a path, like a, a a clear way in policy in in rules, this this ingredient can't go there, and and that's it. So there is this um, way of seeing the resources, and it's complex to talk about if one species goes there and then if you plant it. So it's it's really really um, complex, but but we need to check it. We need to all, all the time review what about the policy behind our um, agriculture or our. Uh, food system and yours, no, and and everywhere because some some things come from one place uh, cheaper here than than is um, so we need more money or more in, invest more time and money and effort to grow one thing than is uh, the price in the market that come the, the same resource coming from another place. It happens with the weed and sometimes with potatoes. We are the country of potatoes and we are importing potatoes because it's cheaper. It's cheaper than you just buy the potatoes, grow in somewhere else, deforestate in one place, one place somewhere, and then grows for our own. So that goes to 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 other other part of, of this. As if if you in the European Union, for example, 
you are crazy now for this Amazon ad and you can help the forest eating uh, Amazon ad and that is the idea. Think that it's better eat or use products with added value in the source because this added value in the source create more money, create more jobs, create more creativity in the place, create more and, and more and more, no? Then instead, uh, um, in the opposite uh, situation and just buy the, the cacao bean and be the, the master of chocolate in Belgium, Belgium, uh, Belgium or um, Switzerland and then sell again to us the best chocolates in the world. So this is one idea that for me is it's, it's crazy and it's, it's delicious and, and it's, it's, it's perfect because it, it, it um, shows us that we are in contact interaction but how the coffee, the Italian coffee, it's so famous and, and the coffee comes from Ghana or from Peru or from Brazil um, and nobody cares, no? So that's why it's not just, again, not just the ingredient and not just the raw material. It's, it's the people who is behind and, and of course, keep going and keep eating exotic things for you and, and we are going to um, eat things too but try to think and try to see what is behind and and here another small thing think that is the certifications in my point of view and i don't know what you think about this but it exists because we can trust each other it's because i don't know you clara that i need a certificated product here so of course when i can't uh, know you and when you are far from me and I, I, it's impossible to know you. Okay, these certifications tell me something, but try to connect with the source again in your local place, or if it's far from you. But, but yeah, don't 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 lose this connection. I mean, that's sort of what you said, right? When you look at the uh, at the supply chain, um, it's not only. Uh, you said the focus is always on the product, um, and you know, and the consumer goes and buys a product and through that, in your case, can actually contribute to conservation. So in that case, the value chain is not only uh, a food chain or a product chain, but it's actually a, a way of transmitting knowledge when it's done in a way that that's possible. And I think that's a wonderful way of doing things because exactly what you're saying, you don't need certifications anymore. Um, you know, we can have the, the, the refining processes of, for example, coffee and uh, cacao and all these things that we generally um, buy the resources uh, somewhere else and then sell them here in very expensive um, ways. So I think the idea of this, of the food chains, of supply chains, of being transmitters of knowledge and of tradition, of, of culture in the end, is a wonderful way of thinking about these usually frowned upon you know or unstable systems that we have created and don't know how to get out of but i think maybe it's time to reinterpret them um yeah 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 and 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 it's um it's a lot a lot of responsibility for the consumers so at the end all of us and and every day and every moment we are choosing who we are supporting. So, so it's not complex. At the end, it's not complex. It's, it's, it's in our hands. And it's in, instead of buying clothes from a known, it's okay, I'm going to put some euros and some dollars, some solace to, to, to discover something, some stories here. And, and I'm not talking about bad quality of products. I'm not talking about um bad quality of relationship i am super uh, um in the same uh, uh, come on I, I agree with with a good uh, high high quality product high quality packaging but no plastic of course and 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 no um bad stories behind and i agree with technology and and i i guess we we it's just how we use the tools but it's a lot of responsibility in in ourselves, and that's why I guess is is more difficult. Yeah, and I think it is sometimes also a bit of an 
it's a huge task to ask from people to to say, you know, you. Um, I mean, at least here in Germany, I think politics really like to say, okay, it's all of your consumers' decision. You know, it's up to you to make the right decision. But on the other hand, it's the politics that politics that try to also hide a lot of things or enable companies to hide a lot of things and at least don't charge him for doing so. So I think they're sort of, uh, you know, they're they're very, yeah, they're very ambiguous in that way that they, <laughs> you know, ask yeah. us to do one thing but don't support, you know, if I'm supposed to make the decision myself, then I need all the information I can get, um, which is not given. And then I also need the resources, you know, which is time and money to, to even start thinking about these processes. And I think both of these resources are, a, to a certain degree, a privilege to have. So I think it's important that um, that politics play into this game as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and politics and companies. Yeah. And, 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 and companies that, um, if you see everything fluent and integrate, is uh, the value of one fruit or one not. Uh, and you take the and yeah you can pay two euros for this but no so there is somebody who offer you cheaper not but you are paying for the marketing mm -hmm. done for this not so at the end it's just the it's trans trans um like putting less money on the base less money on the owner of the resource or at the end nature Less money, less money in nature, and putting some more money in another thing in this marketing. But at the end, it's two euros from you. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, it's not just policy; it's company. It and and it is not easy for mm -hmm. us. No. Mm -hmm. yes. Um, how do you feel like um, in the last couple of months with the pandemic, your local supply chains have proven to be more resilient? Um, than than the global supply chains. How how has the system sort of have you been proven right with what you're doing by or how uh, was your experience? <laughs> well, it was it was it was interesting. It was a lot of information from from ourselves in this COVID uh, time. Uh, I'm now I'm in Lima, so it's a city, a big city with 11 million people. But I'm connected with, with Madre de Dios, that is the region where I grew up, um, where it's really less than one million, less um, few people. And, and I, I was comparing how different was this. In, in the cities, in the big cities, where really uh, urgent like, to find a way to find food and good food. And at the beginning, it was really difficult because um, the supermarkets were well, kind of um, regulated, and then the local far, uh, farm, farmer's market, they were closed. So you were calling to, please, 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 you have some, some food. No, yeah, but we are sold out and we can't manage this, the small, the small uh, organic, organic veg uh, suppliers, for example. So it was crazy. Then they grew up, they, they have websites and apps, and now there are lots of, of these um, interesting things for Feed the City. But in the other side, in, in Madre de Dios, where, um, the people were saying like, yeah, I'm going to the farm, for my, my family farm, and find, uh, like running, out, running out from this, this uh, situation. And they were there, growing the food, the, 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 the chickens, the, the uh, animals there with the kids all together, like in a vacation time, in a holiday time. And it was clear that you, we need eat food. We, we need eat food and we are not eating anything else. And all the value that everyone can have in the cities, at the end, what is the, the base? It's food and it's water and it's family. And... And yeah, it was funny how, well, funny for me, but how some people were crazy trying to find a way back to this, to this basic, basic thing. And, and I think we re, remake the, the structure and we are rethinking the thing uh, after this, this situation. So, so I, I'm, I am really um, glad of 
of this re reprocess, like reprocess the, the information and 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 think differently. Yeah. Do you think there is a way that cities can be closer to their food production, or do you say what possibilities do you see? Um, how could we do that? <laughs> I, I know city, cities is a big thing, and, yeah. and it's, uh, it, we are talking about cities from the future, and we are redesigning and we are putting a lot of effort and money and doubles. And I, I, I love how people talk about cities, but nobody. It's seen what is, uh, what is, what else is, uh, uh, and where where people is living in the rural areas, and there are not cities, or and a different kind of cities, and but there are lots of different ways of, of living in this planet. So, I I don't know, I I just I just see that interesting. But yes, cities in a different way. Um, and then restructure and rethinking about cities, we can, of course, uh, live closer to our foods. And we, there are lots of examples happening now uh, everywhere, you know? even in San Francisco, that it's supposed that it's super uh, tight or in different big cities, there are small places and you can arrange one meter square to grow your own tomatoes. And <laughs> now it's trendy and and good, good. It's so, if it's so crazy. Pay. It's so crazy how people have moved from from rural areas into the city to get away from the land, to get away from the the hardship of living on a land, from also from agricultural labor, I would say. And now we realize now we're trying to reshape our cities in a way that we can also move the food mm. production into the cities, following the people, which is. Um, I'm not yeah. sure how that's going to, I mean, there's different ways. And I think um, we will have Carolyn Steele tomorrow talking about um, um, cities and food and how food and cities are connected. So I think there's it's, there's a lot of potential, but it's also so crazy how we try to run away from things and then we realize, oh, well, I guess we need them. And <laughs> how do we get them now? Yeah. 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 And, and it's nice that Peru and, and the Amazon uh, people in, in, in Latin America in general, we have a lot of, of land in, in, with not cities. So, and we are on time to rethink and recreate things, uh, I guess. Yeah, and I think yeah. it's time for the rest of the world to look at, in, you know, at that knowledge, because here we have, we have lost a lot of that knowledge and of that production knowledge, but also, um, you know, sort of a circular economy approach is sort of what you're talking about as well, right? And I think it's time for us to look at indigenous knowledge of how to feed communities, how to preserve biodiversity, how to um, maintain a land that is um, still there for generations after us. And I think it's it's really the, uh, you know, time to look at, at, at these examples like yours is. And I think it's really, really cool. Um, what you're doing there. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We all, as a humans, we are all on, on time yeah. to do things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think what the last couple of months have shown us definitely is that we need to rethink quite a few things, but definitely the way how we access food, how we make sure everybody has access to good food and, you know, and yeah. not make it a matter of money. Um, yeah. yeah. And yeah, and that just because we have the money doesn't mean we can buy flour in the end of the day. Flour was what was definitely short here for, for weeks and weeks. You couldn't buy any flour. It's like, yeah, I mean, we can grow grains here definitely when we do, but we don't have uh, the post-production or whatever, you know, it's so crazy. Yeah, yeah. And and, and I, I guess, and, and, and that's why the event that you are doing here and talk about food for three days is amazing because <laughs> Uh, and 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 it's really. I was thinking in, if this event were in physic, like in in the place in Germany, mm -hmm. for sure, ju just people who is interested in, or is working in the the um, topic is going to arrive there. But now, everyone can can access to this, and this is another thing from the pandemia, from the from the COVID situation, and 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 I guess it's um, it's really really good to, to reach more people and, and that's super.
Thank you. Definitely, so and you can be here. I'm not sure if you would have come to Munich to to tell us <laughs> about your work. I'm not sure. <laughs> so this is even a, a greater advantage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. for the last few minutes that we have, maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit of what your plans are for Shiwi. How you wanna, you know, continue? What is? What are your future plans? There is there, you know. Um, yeah, what's what's coming for you? Do you um, have any <laughs> ideas? <laughs> well, it, it is a big question um, because Shiwi, as as is, it was my kind of my pilot of a new thing. As a biologist, I didn't know really how to create money, <laughs> and but it, it is working and, and it is stable. But I guess now we need to go more into that understanding of of how market is made and and keep going in that in that idea and because because I guess um, and I think if, if the market change change um, it has to go for that way so now for example I don't know if you know the B Corps this benefit corporations there are more and more companies going in 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 that integrated way of, of seeing the <clears throat> the systems so I guess she has to go for that path, and and we are thinking in exporting, but export some products from the Amazon basin and and from from people who is already uh, doing conservation, but but of course we are thinking about the food the carbon footprint and and what is in the the big bag, no? But it's a time for. For rethinking even for us um, but the idea is keep going with the with the model because because we are consumers everywhere and we need to be connected with this with the base and with the nature everywhere and and well that that's more or less what I have and of course you are welcome to the forest to my place where, where, we, where we we take out we collect the the Amazon nuts uh, every March, and you can you can feel the effort that you need to have a package of thirty grams of snack. <laughs> so yeah, you are welcome here. <laughs> okay, uh, next time I'm around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. And that's one thing that we really need to um, need to keep doing because we have to. We are we need more people um, talking and touching and feeling and smelling and eating um, different kind of foods and different kind of cultures and I guess this is is this is um, the 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 way, the future of chiwi for now yeah that sounds like a very wonderful plan <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome <Perfect. laughs> I think um, I will check really quickly if there's any questions from uh, the audience um, I don't think so um, and in this case, since this was sort of a perfect rounding, uh, round finishing end to what we've been talking about earlier, I would um, put this to, uh, I would move this, the further discussion into the uh, deep dive room where uh, the audience can actually go and talk and ask questions. Um, so if um, you have any questions for Sophia about her work, about, um, I guess, I'm about food and Peru and Chiwi and Amazon Basin and biological questions. I'm not sure what else. <laughs> um, please come over to the Jitsi room. You find the link in the YouTube um, uh, description or in the convention hub. Um, and then we will meet you there. Um, and until then, Sophia, thank you so much for the wonderful insight into your work and what you're doing in Peru. And um, chapeau to um, what you've achieved there. And I hope we can all learn a little bit from from what you're doing there. Thank you're you welcome, so much. Sarah. Thank you for your job too. Bye bye. Bye.